Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel Maison African Motives are uh, still working on engineering science N2. Uh, so in this platform we shall go, uh, going to focus on the question paper which was written November 2018 that is on heat. So we are given a question number 7 on heat. So if you are new to my channel you can consider subscribing so that you become part of the family and you won't miss any of the classes that we shall be having from Maison African Motives. Okay, so let us quickly rush through the question that we are given. Uh, on question 7, we have 7.1 where we are given to define the term heat capacity. Okay, define the term heat capacity. So as you know guys, I always come with a definition that is uh, the one that is required in your syllabus. So the heat capacity, this is the heat energy needed or the heat energy required to raise the temperature of the entire mass. Take note here, of the entire mass of the substance by one degree Celsius. Okay, so the heat, uh, which is the temperature actually, that you're talking about a rise of what? Of one degree Celsius. So that is the heat capacity for you guys. Uh, okay, uh, number two, we are given that a welder, take note, places steel, this is a steel workpiece, which is a temperature of 90 degrees Celsius into a container with 0 0.5 kgs of water at 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, if the final temperature of the system, that is uh, of everything, is 50 degrees Celsius, calculate the mass of steel, of the steel work piece. Okay, guys, we have got two things here. We have got this steel work piece. So let's just write here, steel. All right, then we have got the, the water because this was placed into a container of water okay so we have the water here all right so these are the two uh, important things that we have all right so let's take the information according to these two according to the steel we are given the temperature of the steel because a welder places a steel workpiece which has a temperature of so this is the temperature of the steel okay so I'm going to write this as TS for steel okay which is a 90 degrees celsius okay that is the temperature of the steel okay let's move on into a container with 0 0.5 kgs of water so this is the mass of water okay so you're given the mass so i'm going to use the w for water mass of water which is 0 0.5 kgs okay so it's going to be 0 0.5 kgs like this. All right. So that's what we have. Let's take another information. At 30 degrees Celsius, which means this is the temperature of water at that moment, which is a 30 degrees Celsius. So these are the two that we are given. All right. Then let's move on. If the final temperature of the system, which means of everything after so we have got the first temperature which is the temperatures of the the temperature of the steel the temperature of the water then there is a temperature of the system which is t2 so i'm going to write this as t2 so this one is going to be shared between these two so we're going to have t2 which is uh 50 degrees celsius all right so we're going to have 50 degrees celsius like this all right so this is the information that you're given guys and um you are given that um, calculate the mass of the steel of the workpiece okay of the steel workpiece calculate the mass so you need the mass so i'm going to write this mass as m but it's for steel so i'm going to write as ms which is for steel so you do not know this mass where are we going to obtain this mass that is the question now that we are having on 7.2 where are we going to have this mass all right guys remember that uh, when you dip uh, this steel it has a higher temperature then the temperature is going to reduce of everything but the temperature of water is going to increase so what you're going to have in this case is the heat that is being added and on the other part there is a heat which is being rejected so you've got the heat from the steel and the heat that is going to be gained because water is going to gain while the steel is going to to lose okay so we've got heat lost 
which is equivalent to heat which is gained or gained is equal to lost one and the same thing so the steel this metal is the one that is losing the, its heat because remember it started with 90 and now it's ending at 50. The temperature of water started at 30, now it's ending it, which means it's gaining this one. Okay, so what is going to be the Q for steel, which is the heat? So remember when you are given mass, uh, temperature uh, of steel and the final temperature, you're going to use this formula, mass of steel. Then uh, you've got uh, S for steel, uh, C, which is the capacity, uh, the capacity that you're going to have uh, from what? from mass which is uh from this steel the specific heat capacity that you're going to take of steel you've got also for water so here you've got uh, the specific heat capacity of steel this one you've got it on your paper and also for water these ones you have them uh let me show you uh let me show you what i'm saying we are talking about the specific heat capacity here so uh, as you can check here the specific heat capacity of water which is 4187 uh, 4, joules per kg degree Celsius. so this is 4187 uh, joule per kg degree Celsius. okay like this that is for water then we need for steel uh, the specific heat capacity of steel that is 500 joules okay so we've got 500 joules per kg degree celsius like that all right so this you've got the information so let's complete our formula so our formula is going to be t two which is of steel okay so let's just write steel minus t2 which is the final of the system okay then the one that is gained by water is going to be mass of water the specific heat capacity of water now take note t2 since this is gaining so it's going to be t2 minus the temperature of water the final temperature is going to be bigger than this one this one is losing so the final temperature is smaller than this one that is why we have to subtract like that okay so now the question needs us to calculate remember you need to calculate the mass so you're going to insert this information as it is okay the mass of steel we have got the mass this is the one that you want to calculate so it's mass of steel times the specific heat capacity of steel which is uh, 500 so it's going to be 500 into the temperature of steel minus the temperature of uh, the final temperature okay so this is the temperature of steel which is 90 minus the final temperature of the system which is t2 this is the temperature of the system which is 50 so you're going to have 50 degrees celsius okay which is equivalent the mass of water you've got the mass of water here which is 0 0.5 kgs so you're just going to substitute 0 0.5 multiply by the specific heat capacity of water which is this one okay which is 4187 into t2 minus the temperature of water t2 is the final temperature of the system which is 50 degrees celsius minus 30 so it's 50 minus 30 so you are supposed to substitute this information guys as it is all right as it is guys okay so if you use your calculator uh properly you are going to obtain uh, this you're going to multiply these two which is going to be something like 2000 2600 if i'm not mistaken here yeah. uh everything by the mass of steel which is equivalent use your calculator guys just open brackets here yeah. use your calculator properly okay so you're going to obtain 41870 like this okay so if you divide both sides you're going to have the mass of steel which is 2,094 kgs okay so if you round off that is what you're going to have so what i want you to note guys is this formula here this is the major part that is important for you all this part you can play your mathematical skills and find the mass but that formula guys you need to know the formula you are losing the there's something that is losing it's it's a uh, heat or temperature 
then another part is gaining which is uh, in this case the water the water at a temperature of 30 now it's at 50 so it's gaining this part started at 90 ended at 50 so it's losing that is heat lost is equal to heat that is gained or heat gained is equal to the heat that is being lost all right so you can use this information to calculate whatever that you want with this formula all right so i think uh, it was uh, pretty clear i think it was pretty clear but if there is any part guys that is not uh, clear let's see let's talk on the comment section let's uh, communicate all right on 7.3 you are given a same situation again this time we've got coal and water a 20 kg mass of coal is used to boil 1200 kgs of water from 30 degrees celsius so it's the same thing uh, that you're given on 7.3 so you're going to separate you've got two things here you've got coal and on the other hand you've got the water all right so what do we have on the call we are given the mass of coal which is 20 kgs of coal okay so i'm going to write as m mass of coal so i'm going to write as c which is 20 kgs okay 20 kgs like this all right let's move on we have got the mass of water mass of water 1200 okay mass of water 1200 kgs this is the mass of water from which is the first the initial temperature actually of water from this temperature so you can write as a temperature of water or you can just write as t1 like this which is a uh, 30 degrees celsius all right so let's see what we are given the first question is 7.7.31 calculate the amount of heat released by the core take note what is releasing heat is the coal and what do we have on this call we are just given the mass guys this is what we have only the mass of coal so how can we calculate the heat that is being released by coal okay we know that there is a formula that connects the heat which is the energy is equivalent to mass times the heat value all right so i can use this information since i only have the mass and i know that the heat value is given so i'm just going to take my mass which is 20 mass of coal which is 20 times the heat value of coal uh, from that information you are going to see that the mass of uh, the heat value is 30 actually there let me just show you okay this is 30 here the heat value of coal is 30 megajoules per kg okay so it's 30 megajoules per kg so if you multiply these two you are going to obtain 600 megajoules. Remember, this was megajoules. So it's going to be in megajoules. That is the energy, uh, the heat that is being released. Uh, so that's how they can ask these, these questions. Uh, the heat released by coal. Then calculate the final temperature. Remember, you are given T1 of water the final temperature of water if 35 percent of heat is used to heat water guys understand the simple statement that is there if 35 percent of heat which heat are we talking about this heat that we are given of 600 mega joules only 35 percent was used to heat the water so which means what is going to be the heat on 7.32 we need the heat of water so it's 35 percent which is 35 percent is 35 over 100 times the heat that we obtained here we obtained a heat of what of 600 megajoules so you're going to multiply that is 35 percent guys okay from your mathematics so this can be 0 0.35 or you just use like that from your calculator you're going to obtain 210 mega joules so it means if we are going to heat water with 210 mega joules what is going to be the temperature? the question here is not asking about the heat it is asking about the final temperature of water okay we know that there is a formula that connects the this heat that we are given for water it's q which is equivalent to mass of water times the specific heat capacity of water times the change in temperature so it's actually something like this mc 
uh, change in t but here i'm just using the w there to indicate that you are working with what with water okay so i'm going to substitute this uh from the information so this is 210 mega mega take note is 10 to the power 6 that is mega if it is kilo is 10 to the power 3 you multiply times 10 to the power 3 okay but this is mega so it's going to be q which is our q from the 35 percent that you obtained so you're now having 210 times 10 to the power 6 which is equivalent to the mass of water take note we listed this uh information we listed this yes this is the mass of water here the mass of water is 1200 all right so we've got 1200 times the specific heat capacity of water uh, we talked about this last time we obtained 4187 if you still remember okay so what i'm going to do is to find this change in temperature at once why because i know that change in temperature is equal to t2 minus t1 so that i don't complicate my my calculation so i'm going to just find this so how am i going to find this i'm just going to divide since these are multiplying i'm going to divide by 1200 times 4187 divide here by 1200 times 4187 so the moment i divide this i'm going to remain with the change in temperature take note guys you can apply your mathematical skills so in this case you can divide this okay so from your calculator if you divide properly you are going to obtain something like four one comma seven nine six zero three five and so on and so on okay so i'm just going to round off this as change in temperature as uh we can just okay this six is going to change this nine and eight so you can just have four four to one comma eight degrees celsius okay so if this is the change in temperature and in this case we want to calculate the final temperature of water which is the final temperature of water is t2 because we are given the initial value which is t1 so you need t2 like this so how am i going to find t2 i now have the change in temperature and I know that the change in temperature is equal to T2 minus T1. So I'm going to make T2 the subject because this is what this is, this is what I want. Okay, let me just substitute so that I don't confuse someone. T1 is 30 degrees. So the change in temperature is there. So 41,8 is equal to T2 minus T1, which is the one that I showed you, this one, which is 30. Okay, so you're going to have 30 like this. So let's find T2. So you're going to transpose like this. This to the other side is going to add. So it's going to be 41,8 plus 30, which is equal to T2. Okay, so if you add properly in this case, you're going to have your T2 as uh, 71,8 degrees celsius all right that is what we had so guys as you can see it's a pretty question yeah a pretty nice question that stretches you further uh it stretches you further actually if you can see this part it stretches you uh to the limits so these are the questions that you're actually going to work with in your final exams so not to lose marks on these typical questions please make sure that you revise more question papers and uh, revisions from your textbooks and so forth so that's it guys from maison african motives working on question papers and revisions on engineering science and two so not to miss the classes please make sure that you become part of the family by subscribing and also don't forget to share our videos to our friends and colleagues so that they also become part of the family uh, as they are going to learn with us together so guys do us a favor share our videos to our friends and colleagues okay so that's it till we meet again